All right, so I've been driving the Malibu quite a bit since the last video. Um, well, I say quite a bit. I made a trip to Southern Illinois and uh, <clears throat> did some miscellaneous driving. And it's not smoking very much and it runs great, but it's still running rich and it's getting really bad fuel economy. So, I ordered a calibration kit that has the step-up springs, metering rods, jets, and uh, this is what the this is what the outside of it looks like. It's part number 1948, specifically for the 1906 AVS2 carb, and uh, I discovered. <clears throat> upon looking at the owner's manual for the carburetor and going through the chart that shows what size everything this carburetor has in it as far as the jets and the metering rods and the springs and all that well the previous carburetor that I had on this engine I was averaging like 16 17 mile a gallon and I could pull like 18 or 19 on on a long road trip And I haven't seen those numbers since the underhood fire which that's covered in a video and uh, Putting a new carburetor on it and taking it on hot rod power tour spent a lot of money on fuel on hot rod power tour because of this misadjusted carburetor as You can hear the dog is outside barking Tucker Stop barking. That'll definitely work. Okay. So I got this chart out. And I started looking at 1406, which is the carburetor that was on here before the fire. And I was looking at the size jets and metering rods and the spring that were in it. And as far as I was concerned, the AVS2 was the new and improved version of the 1406, so I'd been referencing those numbers this entire time whenever I've been doing research and stuff and yada yada yada. And uh, the other day, well it was last week whenever I ordered this kit, I got to thinking, surely that part number is not different. So I looked at the stamping on the bottom left as you're facing the front of the car on the carburetor and it's stamped 1906 and then it all came rushing back to me. I knew that from when I bought the carburetor that the part number for it is 1906. I don't know how I managed to forget that over the span of like Hot Rod Power Tour in the last few months, but I forgot. So I went down to the bottom of the chart here to 1906 right there and it's a 650 CFM whereas the 1406 is a 600 CFM and the 1906 comes with significantly larger jets and significantly larger metering rods and a different step up spring in it So if I had just calibrated this carburetor back to closer to or the same settings that it was running on this engine before when it was getting great fuel economy, I could have been saving a lot of money since I installed this carburetor to now. <laughs> but the funny thing about hindsight is that it's always 2020. So, I've observed this chart, and based on what they uh, recommend for your uh, cruising mode and power mode, I decided that 
I'm going to go with, let me confirm here, 7342. I'm going to go with number 14. So I'll be coming back this way one step or one stage on the power mode because I think whenever you mash it, it's been pretty rich and not like it should be. And I'm going three steps down or three stages down on the cruising mode because the difference in the fuel economy that this thing has been getting versus before is astronomical. I mean, it has been averaging 10 to 12 miles per gallon, and it used to average 16 to 18 miles per gallon. And I've read the plugs, uh, I think, twice since I had this new carburetor put on here. And it's rich, like, really, you know, in-your-face rich, like Richard Rawlings from Gas Monkey Rich. <laughs> um, so, it's it needs to come way down on the cruising mode. And I decided to go a little bit easier as far as coming back on the power mode, because out of all of the jets and metering rods that they send in this kit um it didn't have quite the configuration that would go back to exactly what was in the 1406 on the car before so i'm getting close to it and i think it's going to be really happy so i'm going to switch out those metering rods because that that stage that i showed you is uh, just calls for changing the metering rods where some stages call for changing the metering rods and the jets some just the jets some just the metering rods so, I'm going to change out the metering rods, and then I'm going to do a good once-over on the car like I normally do, which is just, yep, it's good to go. And then uh, I'm heading to Southern Illinois today to meet my new nephew, who is uh, three weeks old. I am so excited to meet him. So, that'll be a good uh, hour and a half road trip to Southern Illinois. I'm going to drive all the way down there and check my fuel economy whenever I get there and see what it looks like. And if I need to, if I'm just, if it's still just terribly terrible, then I'm going to take a spark plug. Sorry, I got a text. I'm going to take a spark plug out and read the plug. But I have a good feeling that this is going to be perfect and that uh, whenever I check the fuel economy when I get down there uh, taking the interstate be wound up a little tighter probably 17 mile a gallon 16 mile a gallon so we'll see I will keep you guys posted okay I'm gonna roughly show you how to do this it's my first time changing out metering rods but I've had carburetors apart a handful of times, so I'm gonna take the breather off. And try not to drop it. And right there is a Torx head screw. There's one here and one right there. And you loosen those up until that little awkwardly shaped door will swing out of the way. And then the metering rod assembly will lift up out of there so I'll show you guys that You may have to use your screwdriver nearby or a Torx bit or something to persuade that up a little bit just so you can get a hold of it. So that is the metering rod assembly. It's a little shuttle with the metering rod. 
retained to the shuttle with a funky looking spring. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to use my Torx bit to lift the step up spring out where I can get a hold of it because I am swapping this step up spring out from the what I believe was orange to yellow and see if it likes it because that's what was in it before. So we take this assembly over to the bench This is the step up spring. I'm going to set that right in there next to the other orange step up springs. And then I think, as far as I know, you pull this spring. There's one end of it that's just a, just the end, basically. Pull it off to the side just a little bit. And then you're able to slide the metering rod out like that. I'm going to put that right there and put this new one in. And I've never done this before, so now would be the time that I would tell you in hindsight I should have held onto that spring better so that it couldn't go anywhere, but it's no big deal. Just got to persuade it back down to where it clips. There's a notch in the metering rod there that that spring will sit in to keep it from backing back out. So there is that assembly. And I'm going to take my yellow spring and put it in there and walk back over to the car and try not to drop anything. I am going to set this down, take my yellow spring, and drop it right down in there, and then take this assembly and slide it down in there, and jiggle it around to make sure, jiggle, 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 make sure that that, uh, spring gets seated in the shuttle nice and happy then go back to the bench to get my tool over here tighten that up nice and snug and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side in real time without talking to you.
Okay. <clears throat> Just like that. They're swapped out. So, I guess I need to have me this kit with me in the car to uh, whoop, change stuff out if I need to. Okay. So, I'll let you know when I'm on the road and how the car feels and blah, blah, blah. I think before at cruising it was uh, loading up on fuel a little bit and then whenever you'd mash it it had to clean out the combustion chamber and kind of get through that bog a little bit I don't know it's it's hard to tell just yet I mean I'm not gonna tell accelerating because I I was tuning it for economy and the primary circuit um, but that step up spring change I think it feels better I don't know if nothing else it doesn't feel worse so that's good so, I'm going to clean the windshield off and then jump on the interstate and put some miles down work today and I decided <clears throat> I'm going to use that time to 
read the spark plugs and wrap up this video and while it's in here I'm gonna inspect a bunch of things and adjust the rear brakes and basically just give it a good once over because um, taking it at about two and a half hours north of here to a concert on New Year's Eve and uh, it's supposed to rain and maybe even be like a slushy rainy mix possibly and I'll be coming home between midnight and 3 a.m. all the way two and a half hours home so just want to check it over and make sure it'll be good for the trip Number one looks okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm hoarse. I'm coming it over, coming to the end of a sore throat and a cough. It looks okay. There's nothing about it that alarms me. I am going to look at this book that I've got that has some good examples. So, according to this, I've got just the slightest itty bitty little bit of what they illustrate on here they call it blistering but just a tiny tiny bit so I don't know if that means it's running lean as in too lean because the fuel mixture should be just about right it makes me wonder if I've got a little bit too hot of a plug in there I don't know they're factory spec plugs, just regular AC Delco plugs, and I don't know the heat range on them. <coughs> but it leads me to believe maybe it's just a touch too lean. But that could just be the case on one cylinder. So we'll go through all of them and see what they think. Yeah, same exact thing. Just a tiny bit of what they call blistering on there. I'll show it to you guys. I can get the camera to focus. Is it going to focus or not? <clears throat> well, the camera won't focus, but you can tell, even with it blurry, that there's a little bit of a tannish. Uh, flaky sort of thing 
It almost looks like mold. Same exact thing. Just a little bit of blistering on there. <coughs> so, it makes sense if on my trip to southern Illinois and back I got 19 miles per gallon wound up at interstate speeds, which was would have been 23 to 2500 rpm and maybe like 22 to 2400 rpm so if they all look the same probably just safe to richen it back up one step yeah same story on this one this one's wet with gas for whatever reason Yeah, so the rear two being one, three, five, seven, and eight. So seven and eight are wet with gas for some reason. from one side of town to the other. A very, very small town. And a lot of idling. I think maybe that's why, I don't know. Pretty much just thinking out loud at this point. Number six looks pretty good. It might have the tiniest little bit of blistering. I've really been wishing lately that I had a wide band O2 gauge, but I really do want to learn how to make accurate adjustments and make an engine happy just from reading plugs. And then someday I want to have the O2 gauge to keep an eye on it and further my knowledge of tuning, but I want to get good at tuning it without an O2 gauge. I also really wish that I had a timing light just to check it and make sure it is where it's supposed to be. It should be where it's supposed to be, but <clears throat> the world's an imperfect place. Things can get out of adjustment. Yeah. 
a little bit of blistering on number four. So it's consistent so far, which is good. I like consistency. Number two has a slight bit of blistering as well. Okay, so every single plug so far showing a little bit too much heat. So I really wish I could check the timing. I think what I'm going to do because right now it's not acting strange it's running amazing it's not making any unsettling noises I think what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> leave it alone drive it on my road trip this weekend and when I get back immediately after a bunch of highway driving Take the plugs out again and read them just to make sure they're the same, that they're still a little bit too hot. <coughs> and I think at that point I'll make another episode and get a timing light from somebody. and to do another bass tuning video to really get it dialed in. Hmm. Strange. I just don't know what to think about it right now. I need to ponder it. With that being said, <coughs> thank you for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and watch all the previous episodes because there's a little bit of everything for everyone. There's tech, uh, pulling engines out of old Ford pickups and doing engine work on them. There's off-roading videos, four-wheeling videos, camping, kayaking, car shows, road trips, hot rod power tour in this car. Uh mowing videos, a hiking video with a little bit of motorcycle content. There's literally like something on the channel for everyone to enjoy. So please subscribe, come back for each new episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.